Okay. I think that kind of goes. That's my arm. I think that goes when you write on the internet. It's like who, implicit in all this stuff behind, like like we're being asked to do blogging. And, mm. Is that is that we're getting a more representative idea of, of the public? It's like they're great chances to respond. No, I know that's a mythical that, thing about that. That is the great paradox of our time. And yes. which the, I mean, it's a, it's a wider thing than the internet, but the internet sum, sums it up. Is that on the surface it says that it is a new form of democracy. Right. Right. And that therefore what you're seeing is a new pluralism, a new mm. collage, a new mosaic of all sorts of different ideas and things, genuinely representative. Yeah. In fact, if you analyse what happens, yeah. it simplifies things. Because, first of all, the people who do blogging, for example, are self-selecting. And quite frankly, if you, it's quite clear that what bloggers are, are bullies. And, and so the internet has removed also a lot of constraints of them. And it's just bullies. They, they are, that, that you know what they're like, they're deeply emotional, they're bullies, and they often don't, don't get out of them. And they are parasitic upon already put, all, sort of already existing sources of information. They do very little research of their own. Yeah. What then happens is that the, this idea of the hive mind, far from leading to a plurality or a new richness, leads to a growing simplicity because the bloggers from one side act to force mainstream media one way. The bloggers from the other side, maybe it be the left or the right, force the mainstream media another way. And what mainstream media ends up doing is nervously trying to course, a middle course, through these bullying the polarised extremes. The polarised yeah. yeah. extremes. Yeah. Who have their view, and if the mainstream media deviates from it, they will run up onto the cliffs yeah. and throw rocks at the, the, the boats trying yeah. to sail through the sea. And on the other side, other extremes are doing the same. And what you end up with is a, an increasingly rigid, simplified view of the world, which is negotiated by mainstream media in response to the bullying extremities. Yeah. And it's far from being what's the phrase, the wisdom of crowds, it's the stupidity of crowds, is that collectively what we are doing is creating a much more simplified world. So you say it's more homogenous as a result? The yes, is more homogenous. it is more homogenous. I mean, all I have, all you have to, I, I, I've done this because I've gone and talked to um, news editors here, but also above all in America, right. in places like CNN, they will tell you that, that the thing they are most frightened of is an assault by the bloggers. Right. And they know that the bloggers, <coughs> okay, let's take it, they come from the left and the right. Yeah. They're just terrified if they go, if they stray that way, the bloggers from the right will come and, you know, onslaught. They'll, they'll yeah. be monstered by that. If they stray that way, they'll be monstered from the bloggers on the left. Yeah. So what they do is they nervously creep along. Yeah. Like, like, sort of, like some sort of big animal in Toy Story. They're, they creep along, hoping not to upset all those demons out there. Right. And what right. that leads to is not only a homogeneity of what, what is being portrayed in the movie, but also a sort of nervousness. And, and, and the moment a, a media system gets infected by nervousness, it, it begins to decline. Okay, wouldn't you say that um, there's an insecurity in the American media culture? I mean, to me, that's, that seems like a whole thing, I mean, that this kind of one size fits all utopianism is everywhere. I mean, Italy had its unique kind of. Uh, problems with the media, we have our own, and Americans have theirs, and Americans, it's very much like the first time you, you walk into a newspaper office there, you'll find these desks are creeping beneath all these gongs and awards that they give oh, yeah. each other, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, each one has about 20 in the lining, I mean, that is just armour plating for, for well, doesn't that show a kind of insecurity, the insecurity was there in the first place? Well, there are two forms of insecurity, I mean, there are, there are two things you're dealing with here, yeah. one, I don't think this is the fault of the internet, this is, what, what it is reflects is a much wider insecurity. Yeah. amongst the media class. Yeah. The media class grew up during a period of certainty, which was the Cold War, yeah. and, and, and all those famous reporters, whose names I'm afraid I can't remember, bestrode the globe and told us what was what, because yeah. everything was simple. We knew who was bad and who was right, even if we disagreed about who they were. We, the, the lines were drawn. Now they don't know anything. Yeah. They know nothing. I mean, it started with the Berlin Wall. None of those journalists, none of those journalists, predicted the Berlin Wall and yeah. ever since then it has been quite clear that most mainstream news journalism has absolutely no idea about what's really going on. Yeah. It reports the fragments extremely well, yeah. but when it tries to join up the dots, it often leads you into a strange, either fantasy world or simplified world, but above all, they know that they don't really know. 
Right. And what that leads to is a terrible sense of insecurity. So what happens? The internet comes along, and the internet allows portrays itself. The, the, the utopians of the internet portray this as a new form of populist democracy. And those those media barons who know they don't know what is going on see in this wonderful salvation. Because they can then say, ah, we'll let the people tell you what's going on. Mm. At which point, I mean, I see it in my own organisation, that, that, that those who run the news organisations, the current affairs organisations, embrace this with a, ah, you know, it's a, oh my God, at last we're off the hook. Right. You know, user-generated content, you know, send the series, and suddenly what you do is you just get the world reported or portrayed in even more fragmented terms yeah, by people yeah. who don't even have no idea what's going on. And in a way, you can understand why it's happening. It is it's it's a loss of confidence amongst a class who believe that they were once supreme. A terrible cocktail. That, that, that they were brought up to believe they were strong and powerful. Now they know that no one cares. He's quite obviously know what's going on. And it leads to this sort of terrible arrogance yet nervousness. And user generated content is the way out. But what it actually leads to is a world in which increasingly no one knows anything. These people have paid a large amount of money actually to be clever and tell us about the world. That's yeah. their job. And, and quite frankly, it's not their fault, but they are famous. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's one of the first things I noticed when blogging came along is that these were very self selecting experts. Actually, with blogging with the, with the so called A list, because all people who'd missed out on the, the dot com bubble the first time around. And you can tell them they were all hyping each other up. There were a lot of people from advertising and marketing. I mean, yes. the A-list was only ever a C-list to begin with. I've never come across a, you know, an intellect. <laughs> what, what First rate you, mind. Though. What blogging lacks is an uh, enthusiasm about finding out about the world. Yeah, the curiosity. About curiosity. It has no curiosity. What it actually has is the desire to bully mm. and to shape the world into the way you want it to do. And, mm. that, and I think that phrase is quite right. You are saying organisation of not of the internet, but of different groups who use the internet to reinforce their own worldview. Well, I think journalists do it because I mean, one of the, as you know, that these experts were popping up in reports and they were producing a, a balanced report solely from these self-selecting people who are all friends. And I think this kind of really atomizes consensus. Because yeah. um, you can kind of pick and choose. But it gives like, people security. You, you found your home, and there's all these people. You know, here is here is the, the, the part of the internet, or, or, and therefore of the world, uh, in which there are people who agree that the invasion of Iraq was all about oil. Over here, there are those who believe that actually it's all about um, stopping Muslim hordes taking over our culture. Mm. And, and here, over here, uh, are sort of. The, the uh, neoconservative rush who believe it's all about ideas. I mean, and, and, and what they used to do, do you remember that um, there was a book about intelligent buildings, how mm. buildings sort of work out how to stand up. Yeah. In a way, that's what's happening at the moment. All these old groups, they're working out how to, how to yeah. hold each other up. And what you do is you just get yeah, this organisation where there is no uh, movement forward. Everyone yeah. just establishes their position. The movement stands up, and that's it. That's right. why everything is so static. Wouldn't you say, I mean, just to play devil's advocate there, but society is always a, uh, a bunch of competing groups all jostling for, for trying to say they're the supremely representative. But they have an idea of what they, what, where, where the world is going to, and they have an optimistic idea. What's, what, yeah. what marks out all these groups is they are fundamentally negative. They're looking for something to criticise. They don't actually have a political idea. They don't know what's yeah. going on. And what they do is they retreat into a simplified and often very dated yeah. view of the world. I mean, and I find that, and, and that, that then, because the German, which is fine, actually, you're right, most people throughout history have a simplified view of the world. What journalism's job is to try and do is just try and go a tiny bit further. Yeah. And actually try and open people's minds up and say, have you thought of looking at it this way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's its dream. <coughs> yeah, it that's all that's right. It doesn't actually have to tell you what should be. It exactly. just says, yeah. well, look, um, have you thought about looking at it this way? What's happening on the internet is that people are retreating into their citadels yeah. where they are, they will not have that. Yeah. And if you try and do it, they don't like it because you're joining up the dots in a way that isn't the way they join up the dots. And right. what journalists used to be doing is, is, is by saying, well, actually, have a look at it this way. Um, and, and what really happens is that you, is that now they are so entrenched within their mm. self-referential groups mm. is that anyone who joins up the dots the other way is a bad person. 